As a reminder, this is a public meeting and it's being recorded for those of you that are calling in. Please ensure that your line is muted. Thank you for that. We'll begin this morning's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Crowley. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. We'll begin this morning's meeting uh, with the Domestic Relations Division. Resolution number 22-23. Resolution authorizing a two-year contract with Pediatric Academic Association Incorporated for medical services for the Franklin County Juvenile Intervention Center in the amount of $1,929,723. Good morning, Commissioners. Barb Reeves, Deputy Director. This resolution is requesting a two-year contract with Pediatric Academic Associations to provide medical and mental health services for youth in the Juvenile Intervention Center. The cost of the two-year contract will not exceed $1,979,723. Pending any questions, the court requests the approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of Resolution 22-23. Second. Moved and seconded. Voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 22-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The engineer. Resolution number 23-23. The 2023 resurfacing program for Franklin County, Ohio declared necessary and hearing fixed <coughs> for Tuesday, February 7th, 2023 at 9 a.m. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. My name is... I just saw you yesterday. Why did I say good morning to you today? <laughs> I'm kidding. You get one good morning it's a week. Okay. Yeah. Like one good morning a week, <laughs> sir. That's it. Well, thank you for that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Cornell Robertson, honored to serve as county engineer for everyone in Franklin County. With me today is Nick Sulis of our government affairs department. I'll present the first two resolutions and Nick will present the last two. However, before I start on our first resolution, I wanted to make mention of something that we're very excited about at the Franklin County Engineer's Office. One week from today, on January 24th, from noon until 2 p.m., we're gonna host our second annual job fair. This is for our youth programs, for summer employment, or as college interns. Now, it's our only second annual job fair, but our youth program has been very strong for a long, long time. And we'll offer positions in bridge design, bridge maintenance, communications, construction services, drainage, highway design, highway maintenance, mobility, planning and programming, land survey, and tax map. So quite a wide range of responsibilities there, not just engineering, of course. I'm passionate about that as well. Yeah. We try to pay very aggressively to attract good youth, and that ranges from $17 per hour to $22 per hour. We'll also offer free professional headshots, resume and interviewing workshops, and on-site interviews. So if you know of, of anyone who may be interested, please help spread the word. If folks are interested, they can call 614-525-5820 or they can check our website out at www.franklincountyengineer.org. Thank you. Thank you. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> our first resolution <laughs> is for our 2023 resurfacing program. This resolution declares that program necessary. We have identified nine roads within our jurisdiction to be included. Those are Bowen Road, Dempsey Road, Elliott Road, Galloway Road, Hayden Run Road, Johnstown Road, Lambert Road, Morris Road, and O'Hara Road. This resolution authorizes the engineer's office to prepare plans, specifications, and estimates for the program. Happy to answer any questions you may have. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 23-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 23-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 24-23. 
Resolution authorizing the Franklin County engineer to enter into a contract modification with Terracon Consultants Incorporated for construction inspection services for the Fisher Road project, Franklin Township, Franklin County, Ohio, for an increase of $46,225 for a revised contract amount of $198,889. Commissioners, as stated, this resolution pertains to the roadway reconstruction project in Franklin Township along Fisher Road between Haig Avenue and McKinley Avenue associated with the Sheriff's new Corrections Center. Specifically, this resolution is a contract modification with Terracon Consultants for additional inspection services of the work being performed by Decker Construction. Pending any questions, I request your approval. Thank you. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of Resolution 24-23. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 24-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 25-23. Resolution authorizing Franklin County agencies to participate in the Ohio Department of Transportation Cooperative Purchasing Program. Good morning, Commissioners. Nick Sulis, Government Affairs Liaison for County Engineer Cornell Robertson. Uh, commissioners, this next resolution comes uh, every two years. It allows the engineer's office to participate in the Ohio Department of Transportation's cooperative purchasing program. Uh, we utilize their program uh, to enter into contracts for the acquisition of road salt, asphalt, uh, glass beads, traffic uh, signal equipment, uh, and the like. Um, so the resolution would agree to the terms and conditions of the director of uh, ODOT. Um, and pending any questions, we ask for your approval. If there, there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of Resolution 25-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 25-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 26-23. Resolution declaring personal property obsolete and no longer needed for Franklin County use and authorizing sale and or destruction of said personal property. Uh, commissioners, our final resolution, as the title indicates, would seek to declare certain items obsolete and no, no, no longer needed for Franklin County use. Uh, specifically, there are two diesel vehicles that will be destroyed pursuant to uh, an Ohio diesel uh, mitigation grant in the amount of $100,000 that requires us to destroy older vehicles that are no longer fit for use in exchange for the grant dollars. Uh, and we will also be disposing an offering for sale uh, at least certain timbers from uh, a barn that is located on the east maintenance facility. It's in a dilapidated state. However, we have found that certain um, timber, structural timber, can actually have some value. So it is our intent to see if we can auction some of those off in exchange for the cost of tearing down the structure. So pending any questions, we ask for your approval. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of Resolution 26-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Resolution number 26-23 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank, Thank you all you. very much. Have a great week. You know, Cornell, you Nick, appreciate it. The, uh, back in the, I'm sure the resurfacing program is much different now than it was back when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I grew up on Morris Road. And yep. back when, in those days when they would resurface the road, my parents would go crazy because they'd resurface the road. And for the next week or so afterwards, the tar would come up off the road and get on the the side panels of, of all the cars, of, of all the of my parents and all the neighbors used to drive my dad crazy. I'd have to be out there scrubbing, you know, giving the, giving the car a car wash every day to get the tar off the car and drive them crazy. And so, but they don't do that. That was back in the 1970s and early mm -hmm. 80s. And so, yeah. I'm sure that you guys use much better uh, materials these days than back then. Yeah, we, we've tried to use different methods, uh, try to keep that kind of inconvenience to an absolute minimum. You know, there are times, though, when there will be minor inconvenience, and there is a tack coat that we have to apply before we put the asphalt down, but on top of that goes sand. So, you know, we really try to be sensitive about those kinds of inconveniences. It, it got better over the years, about. but uh, I remember back in those days, it was terrible. And it was terrible for me because I was out there washing the car every <laughs> night. Every night he was he'd be so he'd get a new car and then that had happened and he I was like you're the one who bought the house out here not me it's not my fault but anyway <laughs> yeah uh, much better these days I'm sure absolutely right. thank you thanks. all right thanks guys uh, on to the prosecuting attorney resolution number twenty seven twenty three. 
Resolution authorizing the county administrator and the county prosecutor to amend the contract <coughs> with the forensic pathologists who are no longer employed by the Franklin County Coroner for professional services. Good morning, Commissioners. Janine <coughs> Hummer on behalf of Prosecutor Tyek's office. Today, the resolution in front of you is an extension of the current agreement that we have with these three pathologists. If you recall, in June of 2022, we entered into a contract with these individuals um, who had left the, pro the coroner's office. This will allow us to um, uh, allow them to come back for testimony purposes and finish the cases that have yet to be tried in common police court. If there are not any further questions, I'm here to ask for your approval. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 27-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 27-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Uh, the Sheriff's Office. Resolution number 28-23. Resolution authorizing a one-year agreement with Criterion Pictures USA Incorporated for the non-exclusive rights to provide viewing access of motion picture DVDs for inmates in the Franklin County Correctional Center in the amount of $2,370. Good morning, Commissioners and County Administration. Albert Smith, Assistant Finance Director for the Sheriff's Office. Um, our first resolution authorizes a one-year agreement with Criterion Pictures USA, uh, which will last from January 15th of this year through January 14th of next year. Uh, this agreement will provide viewing access of motion picture DVDs for inmates within the premises of the Franklin County Correction Center. Pending any questions, I request passage of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 28-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 28-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 29-23. Resolution authorizing the county administrator to sign a letter of agreement to allow the Franklin County Sheriff's Office to provide physical space for use by the Franklin County Coroner's Office as an alternate morgue location. Commissioner, our second resolution will allow the coroner's office to use sheriff's office physical space as an alternative morgue location at 910 North Hague Avenue. Uh, the physical space will be provided in the event of a mass fatality incident or an incident that is not mass fatality, but the coroner's office is incapable of handling at their location and any circumstance that renders the coroner's office physical structure unusable. Uh, this agreement will be in place for one year. Uh, pending any questions, I request, request passage of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 29-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 29-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 30-23. Resolution authorizing the execution of the pre-award conditions and future acceptance of a 2022 American Rescue Plan grant to augment the Central Ohio Violence Eradication Response Team in the amount of $2 million $96,327.35. Commissioners, our last resolution will allow the Sheriff's Office to accept pre-award conditions and future award letter for a $2,096,327.35 American Rescue Plan grant from the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services. Uh, this grant will allow our office to continue the battle against violent crime in Franklin County. Uh, the grant will be used to fund four investigator salaries and to purchase equipment. Uh, the sheriff's duties will include administration, implementation, and oversight of the grant. Uh, the grant period is from February of this year through February 12th of 2025. Pending any questions, I request passage of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 30-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 30-23 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, where's your beard? Your beard? Yeah, you trimmed it down pretty good, but you still have it. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit's left. Your wife's still happy about it? <laughs> she actually, she's, yeah, she likes this way too. I, I got a little sick of the, uh, the longer, longer beard. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank Economic you. development and planning. Resolution number 31-23. 
a resolution appointing four members to the Villages at Galloway New Community Authorities Board and fixing the surety for those trustees' bonds. Morning, Commissioners. Director Jim Schimmer uh, from Economic Development and Planning. Uh, the resolution that I'm bringing forward to you this morning continues the process of establishing uh, the Villages of Galloway uh, as a new community authority. Uh, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 349, Braw Miller Development uh, filed a petition on November 28th of uh, 2022 uh, with this board providing for the establishment of the uh, village, Villages of Galloway uh, New Community Authority. Uh, the board, uh, pursuant to Resolution uh, 0944-22, which was passed on December 13th, determined that the petition that was submitted complied with the uh, requirements of Section 30, excuse me, 349.03 uh, of the Ohio Revised Code uh, as to the form and substance uh, that was needed. Uh, further, uh, this board on January 10th um, uh, found and determined that the district um, was conducive to the public health, safety, convenience, and welfare. Uh, and is intended uh, to result in the development of a new community. Uh, therefore, commissioners, uh, a board needs to be established. Um, there is a citizen's uh, component uh, as well as the developer, but uh, component piece. Um, for the citizen's portion, uh, we are recommending uh, three individuals for your consideration uh, and one public member. Uh, the public member is James Jewell, who is the uh, Prairie Township uh, Administrator. The citizen members are Andrew Hardy uh, of Ohio, uh, employed at Ohio Health, but it lives in the district. Uh, Mr. Hugh Garside, who is the treasurer of the Southwestern City Schools, uh, and uh, Ashley Hoy, who is the farm manager for the Darby Dan Farm. Uh, additionally, the developer will, on their own, uh, uh, provide uh, four members, or excuse me, three members as well. So uh, we're recommending these folks to uh, serve on the uh, new community authority, and I'd ask for your approval of uh, their nominations. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 31-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 31-23 has been adopted. Fantastic, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, job and family services. Resolution number 32-23, resolution approving a COVID-19 recovery grant with Besa Community Incorporated for volunteer event coordination to support distressed Franklin County neighborhoods in the amount of $250,000. Good morning, commissioners. Vivian Turner, Chief Administrator for Franklin County Job and Family Services. Besa Community Inc. is a Columbus nonprofit organization whose mission is to inspire volunteer service and transform civic engagement by bringing the community together in meaningful, impactful ways. A core initiative of the organization is to support distressed neighborhoods blighted by poverty and critically under-resourced. The goal of BESA Community Recovery Neighborhood Initiative is to transform response efforts into longer-term initiatives that will direct scarce resources to the areas of greatest need. Over the initial award period last year, BESA far surpassed its annual goal, engaging with nearly 5,600 5, volunteers to assist with community events throughout our county. With this year's grant award, BESA plans to coordinate 20 initiatives per month in neighborhoods across Franklin County, reaching approximately 2,000 residents. This resolution aligns with our Rise Together Blueprint, goal number 10, and pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 32-23. Second. Moved and seconded. Voting, Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 32-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 33-23. Resolution approving a contract agreement with the United Way of Central Ohio Incorporated for tax preparation services in the amount of $75,000. Commissioners, Tax Time is a coalition of nonprofit business and governmental organizations that seek to help low to moderate income households claim available tax deductions or credits. 
avoid preparation fees and advance on the path towards financial independence. It combines both the United Way's Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, or VITA, and the ARP Tax Counseling for the Elderly Program under one, one umbrella. Since its inception in 2006, tax time, IRS certified volunteers have helped more than 163,000 Central Ohio households. And they claimed over 172 million in refunds. The free service also has saved Central Ohio families an estimated $33.5 million in tax preparation fees. This year, residents will be able to access free tax preparation services, both virtually and safely in person at dozens of sites across Franklin County, including public libraries, community centers, and social service agencies. Residents can learn more by calling Lutheran Social Services 211 hotline. They can also learn more by visiting getyourrefund.org backslash UWCO. This resolution supports goal number four of your Rise Together Blueprint and pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. Thank you. I don't have a question. I just have a, a comment. Um, when I was attending law school at Capital University, um, I used to volunteer with VITA program, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, and absolutely love that program and the assistance that it provides to um, especially our seniors. Um, so not just the low and moderate income individuals, but our seniors who sometimes tend to get taken advantage of trying to go to other tax preparers or you know, just really don't know, but they can come over to the, they could come over to the law school who was in partnership with United Way and um, get their taxes prepared. And so just really support the program and I'm glad we continue to support it here. That's it. Um, but if there are no additional comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 33-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 33-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 34-23, resolution approving a subaward agreement with the Nexus Incorporated doing business as Piro for a technology platform that connects youth and young adults to employment and training opportunities in the amount of $75,000. Commissioners, our last resolution this morning is a partnership with Piro. It arose from conversations with the business community following the release of the Rise Together Blueprint which emphasize the need for a better, more centralized way to connect youth with employers who had summer jobs or paid internships. A Nexus Inc. doing business as payroll has a technology platform and a mobile app that connects youth and young adults to a variety of skills, training, and employment opportunities. During the last year's award period, payroll helped connect youth enrolled in our Achieve More and Prosper program, um, comprehensive case management, with more than 100 employment leads. This year, in addition to connecting youth with jobs, we are, pi we are going to pilot a localized approach to work with AMP enrollees attending the Groveport Madison High School to help connect them with tailored career interests through the platform. Youth will have the opportunity to participate in work readiness training, gain knowledge on specific in-demand careers, participate in mock interviews, and apply for positions aligned with their career interests. This resolution also supports our goal number 11 of our, of our Rise Together Blueprint. And pending any questions, we ask your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 34-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 34-23 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. All right, thank you, Vivian. We'll move on to the purchasing department now. Resolution number 35-23. Resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $41,826,905.65. cents. Director uh, Perry Ballinier, you're on mute. Thank you, I apologize for that. 
Uh, good morning, commissioners. Megan Perry Ballinier, Director of Purchasing. This resolution requests your approval of 544 purchase orders for which the county auditor has pre-certified available funding. Pending any questions, I request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for approval of resolution 35-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 35-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 36-23. Resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $4,250. Commissioners, this resolution requests your approval of one purchase order to Huntington National Bank. The county auditor has pre-certified available funding and pending any questions, I request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, I move for approval of resolution 36-23. Um, second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Resolution number 36-23 has been adopted with Commissioner Voices noted abstention. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any journalizations this morning? Uh, yes, we have one. With the recent selection of Commissioner O'Grady as President of the Board of Commissioners for 2023, and in consideration of Commissioner Voice and Commissioner Crawley's selections, the 2023 committee assignments for the Board of Commissioners have been made. The noted assignments will be filed with today's meeting minutes for the record and be distributed to our internal and external partners who may be impacted by these selections. Thank you. Um, before we move on with the Board of Commissioners, uh, I just want to make one observation. Um, you know, the work that we do as um, county commissioners is uh, work that, you know, we all value. During the holidays, we had um, you know, we had a, a, a very impactful um, situation that we all dealt with here in, in Franklin County with uh, the, the um, issue at Sawyer Tower. Uh, all of our employees led by uh, Deputy County Administrator uh, Bivens, everybody stepped up and we had um, residents here in Franklin County that were so so impacted and, and we're still working with our partners to deal with, with that situation. Um, and, and so, you know, we, we think about our, our uh, slogan of every resident every day uh, all the time, it's even on Christmas Day. Um, and, and so we do this work you know, with our colleagues across the state and across the country. And on a regular basis, um, our colleagues across the country, we think about them um, because they deal with natural disasters that we don't oftentimes have to deal with here in central Ohio. We had that situation on Christmas Day where we had some bitterly cold weather that got uh, that impacted the residents of Sawyer Tower, uh, and then we had to step up and, and, as county commissioners here and, and deal with our residents here. But we, on a regular basis, have our colleagues that we think of often in South Florida or on the Gulf Shore that are dealing with a, a hurricane, wildfires out in the you know in the, in, in the Rockies, um, and now in here over the last <coughs> couple of weeks, um, we have friends that are county commissioners that are dealing with. Uh, residents in in, um, uh, in California because of all the the rain and the, and the disaster that they've been dealing with there and and the 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 story is not just what we see on the news uh, all the flooding going on in California and people being you know thing you know the devastation that's going on with the infrastructure and people being you know impacted by their homes you know being flooded but but also uh, what that does to the economy in California and the fact that now, People that you know are out of work because of the disaster that they're dealing with, whether it's a hurricane, whether it's a wildfire, whether it's flooding in California. I was texting with uh, just here during the during the meeting. I was texting with my one of our friends out in California. All three of us know him. He's he just got elected second vice president of of NACO, James Gore, um, and and he was talking about you know how so many of the employees now in in his area in his region are now going to be dealing with the fact that they're going to be uh, out of work uh, for an extended period of time because of all the flooding that's out there and the fact that the county's now going to have to step up and deal with the fact that they've got so many people now that are impacted because of this flooding, not just because of the damage, not just because of all the things that we see on TV and we think of immediately because of the flooding, but then the, the secondary, the residual 
impact of the flooding going on out there that the county, Sonoma County that he's in, very wealthy county in this country, that, he, that they're going to have to deal with because of, uh, all of all of the flooding and the impact of the flooding. So you're going to have tons and tons of people, lots and lots of thousands of employees or, or people in his county that are going to be out of work uh, for the foreseeable future because of all the flooding. Uh, so the, the work that we do here is very, it's, it's the same in every county, whether they're poor counties, rich counties, red counties, blue counties. Um, and so uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a urban county or a rural county. It doesn't matter uh, where you are geographically. Uh, we all deal with the same things and natural disasters impact all of us whether it's uh, frozen pipes on Christmas Day here in central Ohio or rain that just never stops coming on the West Coast. So uh, was, you know, wasn't expecting to give that speech here today or, or make those comments here today, but uh, I got a long text from James because I've been asking how he's doing and how his family's doing and how his business is doing and, and through all of this, and, and he sent me that text. I got one from him late last night because there's three hours difference, and then I got another one from him this morning thanking me for, for asking about, you know, how they're handling it out there. And so, anyway, I uh, just wanted to share that with everybody this morning. So, yeah, thank you. all right, uh, on to the Board of Commissioners, Madam Clerk. Resolution number 37-23, resolution of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners to convene into executive session for the purpose of considering personnel matters, to consider the purchase of property, to confer with the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office concerning pending or imminent litigation, and to consider information related to economic development assistance. All right, bear with me, this is long. I really just <laughs> want to say, move to convene to talk about some stuff. Um, but, but, but we can't. So move to convene into executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official to consider the purchase of public or property for public purposes to confer with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are the subject of pending or imminent court action and to consider confidential information related to the marketing plan, specific business strategy, production techniques, trade secrets, or personal financial statements of an applicant for economic development assistance or to negotiate or to negotiations with other political subdivisions respecting requests for economic development assistance, provided that the following conditions apply. The information is directly related to a request for economic development assistance that is to be provided or administered under any provision of Chapter 715, 725, 1724, or 1728, or Section 701.07, uh, 701 37035.67, to 3735.70, 5709.40 to 5709.43, 5709.69, 5709.73 to 5709.75, 5709.77 to 5709.81 of the revised code, or that involves public infrastructure improvements or the extension of utility services that are directly related to an economic development project. Further, that the executive session is necessary to protect the interests of the applicant or the possible investment or expenditure of public funds to be made in connection with the economic development project. What she said. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. <laughs> After I said all that. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Definitely, yes. Resolution number 37-23 has been adopted and you are now in executive session. I don't want that job ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make a note. <laughs> I'm just joking. 